the uh, mission for Eroja is uh, basically to make blockchain easier for people and uh, to let people create their applications based on Eroja easily and without um, working too much on the architecture. So you just take it and you can actually start your first Eroja node like in 10 minutes. So it's real easy, for, even for people who are not very technically oriented. So even for business, it's uh, quite easy and reliable. So uh, here is what uh, the structure at the moment looks like. Uh, we have one main um, company that's uh, maintaining Eroja and contributes to it at the moment, but we are really um, we expect other companies to join us soon when we release the 1.0. And uh, we also welcome any individuals that would like to help us develop Eroja um, and help some documentations. Um, so you can join uh, Eroja community by building your projects uh, on Eroja and sharing your experience. So we, we really do collect some feedback all the time because it's re uh, we really want to know how you use Eroja and uh, maybe the ways we, we could actually improve it together. Uh, you can contribute to the code by going to Hyperledger Jira, uh, help us translating documentation. Uh, we've contacted uh, Chinese working group uh, about that as well, so they are helping us translate the documentation. Uh, you can also help us uh, create better documentation, report bugs, and uh, just generally chat with us uh, in uh, the chats because they are, we are very communicative and uh, we really do enjoy talking to other people and uh, sharing ideas. Uh, you can learn how to contribute, I mean, the process, uh, some guidelines in, uh, on our GitHub. Uh, there is a special document called Contributing, so there are some very interesting guidelines and uh, you could find it useful. So uh, now a little bit about Eroja uh, in general from business side, um, from the business point of view. So uh, Eroha can be used to manage identity information, um, assets, data sharing, and uh, there are many more possible use cases. Uh, it only depends on your vision and uh, you can build almost anything on Eroha. So uh, what we want to do is to lower the complexity of DLT for people who are only coming to it or maybe they're using it and maybe they don't need some excessive uh, features. Eroha is simple and reliable, so that's what we want to show people, and um, that's why we like it so much. So it all started in Japan, in Tokyo, uh, in 2016, when uh, Japanese companies uh, worked with I worked together to create another framework. It was inspired by Fabric and uh, was uh, Eroja is written on C++ and it came from uh, came with Sumeragi consensus at first. But now we are here, we have uh, many lines of code that provide many awesome features and uh, we are now production ready. Well, we are releasing production ready very soon, like in a week or two. And uh, we, we will talk about the features that Eroja provides at the moment a little bit later. My colleague Andre will talk about technical points. Um, so uh, business features of Eroja is basically creation of uh, and management of uh, custom countable assets. For example, cars, money, or kilos of, uh, I don't know, of anything of gold here. So um, management of user accounts, we will also cover that a little bit later. Um, taxonomy of the accounts based on domains, systems of rights and verification of permissions, validation of business rules and multi-signature transactions. So uh, one of the simplest case scenarios is uh, when we have three abstract banks running Eroja um, and we have two customers of, uh, well, basically users of uh, services of those banks. Bob that has $200 and Alice that has 500 and Alice sends to Bob $100. All of the banks record the transaction and uh, each and every one of them can be sure that it's true. 
So even if one of the banks fail or if uh, in one of the banks some uh, very bad person decides to delete that transaction so Bob wouldn't get his money, um, it, it's not going to happen. But that's, uh, that you probably know that's one of the uh, perks of any blockchain system. So in, in Eroja, the setup will look as simple as that. We'll have three accounts like administration account, Bob's account and Alice's account. Then uh, they will have two different roles, bank for administration, um, client for Bob and Alice. There will be assets like United States dollars and uh, there will be three domains on the Roja level. Uh, it's abstract one, abstract two and abstract three. H1 is basically the bank here. Another um, example scenario that we actually tested with one of the companies, uh, with one of the insurance companies in Japan, is uh, let's let's say there are three in insurance companies, or maybe four, or maybe five, or uh, whatever, um, and they are running at Oha. They here is Bob that uh, wants to trick the insurance companies and would like to register his uh, laptop, very expensive laptop, you know, Macs are extremely expensive sometimes, uh, in each uh, of the insurance companies. And then when he breaks it, he wants to receive the insurance money from each, each of them while having only one laptop broken. It won't do uh, and it won't work here uh, because the insurance companies will be able to share the information you can see that in Eroja it will look like like this. So there will be two two accounts, like administration account and uh, Bob's account. Uh, there will be insurance company role and client role. Um, and Bob's account details will be basically one MacBook or two or three. And uh, based on that account detail information, uh, the insurance companies will be able to give very quick reply on whether they can um, give him the money for that broken MacBook. So here is another um, use case scenario with a multi-signature. It's, um, let's say there are some abstract bank or two or three or five banks running at Oja, and uh, they have three customers, Bob and Alice, sharing one account because apparently they are married now, and they have their son, Tim, and um, they would like to send him $1,000 to pay for his tuition fees. We know that tuition fees are usually much more expensive, but let's say that it's going to be $1,000. Um, and uh, they don't want another of, the, uh, another of the spouse to be able to spend the money without any agreement. So in this case, if they want to send him $1,000, they will need both to share their private keys to sign the transaction. Only when Bob and Alice both uh, sign the transaction, it will be sent to the ledger. And so Tom, Tim will receive his money. Um, that's what it will look like uh, on Iroha side. There will be three accounts, um, administration, Bob and Alice's account and Tim's account. There will be two roles, bank and client, and the assets will be USD. And domains depends on how many banks we have in the system. So project, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about projects that were implemented by uh, Saramitsu company that's actually um, com maintains the Eroja at the moment. So um, here is a Bakonk. Um, it's a payment system for Cambodia. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, it's basically the system that will work with all the all the banks and people in Cambodia will be able to send money and receive them use, using blockchain and QR codes. So it's kind of amazing how they will be able to send the money through throughout the whole country. Um, there's also a Visa Everywhere initiative. Uh, with Eroja, we won uh, uh, audience favorite audience favorite prize and uh, creating a solutions for Visa now. There is also a three, uh, D3 Ledger. It's a system of custodians. You can check it, check it out. I will send the presentation soon. Um, so you'll be, uh, you can see that based on Eroja, 
um, there is a system that ensures that no money goes out of the, let's say, uh, security depository. So uh, some digital assets come into D3 Ledger uh, where Iroha runs. So there might be different custodians um, writing down the information on the transactions in their ledgers and uh, only with several signatures, the money can be taken out of the depository. So it's a safe way of using digital assets and cryptocurrencies. As you probably know that I think every second Bitcoin was stolen at some point. So uh, such services might be very, very useful. There is also a KYC solution where one person can uh, register and uh, go through know your customer uh, procedures only in one company and then the information that he actually passed the verification will be shared through other companies which makes it easier for them to receive new clients and uh, not actually performing KYC again. There is also a decentralized economy uh, just called Sora that's another project based on Iroha. It's a way of uh, decentralizing economy, basically making it autonomous. Um, and another project that was implemented in uh, Aizu University, it's uh, Biako. And uh, it's basically a way that students can use their funds uh, stored in blockchain to pay for the services like university cafeteria, send the money to each other. So um, basically they have their own local uh, currency that can be used within the university. So there are other projects uh, from the community. Um, it's AQO, I hope I, I've read it correctly. It's a healthcare project. There are also people that told us that they are making solar energy tokenization project and also management uh, of transactions between recipients and donors, also a healthcare project. And there are also equity capital markets project. So uh, basically there are many, many use cases for Eroha and uh, you, just, you just name it. Um, future development of Eroha, we believe we're going to, uh, well, this is the plan that we have for the nearest future. We want to implement Byzantine fault tolerant consensus, smart contracts, because at this point, we, uh, Iroha basically operates uh, with comments and queries. Andre will tell about that uh, more in the next presentation. Then uh, we'll have integration with Hyperledger Ursa for better cryptography. Um, we're also going to have statistics API, diversification of the community. That's also our goal. And uh, we really welcome everyone here. And um, development of Veroja learning materials, that's just some of the objectives at the moment, but we're always welcome any new ideas. So basically that's the end of uh, my presentation. It was kind of an overview. So if you have uh, any questions, I think you could ask them now, or maybe we'll have the questions at the end of the, of the meetup, but anyway, um, you can contact me um, in the in chats or I can send you my email. So if you have any questions about the Roja, just let me know. Thank you.